Hello, all of my lovely subscribers, all 3,500 of you. I cannot believe that in one month, you guys. You guys are literally the best. Um, thank you so much for all of your support. Happy February. If you're new to the channel, this is not a typical read for me. This is a special read that I'm going to be doing because it is February and I am the Southern Strega. And by Southern, I mean I live in Atlanta, Georgia, which is the epicenter of the Civil War as well as the Civil Rights Movement. And here in America on February 1st starts Black History Month. So with that being said, I am going to um, pay homage and honor and respect to Black History today. And I'm going to be pulling some um, cards from a Root Worker deck that I am going to put a link in the description box that I suggest that you pick up if you are into tarot and um, connect to this type of energy. It's the Hoodoo Tarot, if you can see it right here. It comes with this amazing guidebook, guys, and I never read from guidebooks. I'm an intuitive reader. I just interpret from pictures, but this is the only deck that I am going to read from the guidebook because they have done an amazing job um, making this almost like a historical read. A lot of the people on these cards are actual people who lived and have a story and are, are known. I mean, you can Wikipedia some of these people. Like, <laughs> It's going to be a history lesson as well as a tarot reading today. Um... I am not a root worker. I do not claim to be. I am a channeler. I channel energy and you can feel the energy um, around this type of mysticism very hard down here in Atlanta. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of suffering. There was also a lot of, you know, coming together as a community and rising from ashes and just a lot of powerful energy down here in the South. Okay. Um, if you're not familiar with hoodoo, it's basically what happened as a byproduct of the transatlantic um, slave ordeal. Um, when Africans were removed from their home, forcibly removed and sold into slavery, they started coming into contact with Europeans and indigenous people in the new colonies in North America. Hoodoo is what happens when all of those different religions kind of sort of mix together. Um, you have probably practiced hoodoo and you don't even know it. If y'all were eating collard greens and cornbread and pork on New Year's Day, then you were engaging in hoodoo. <laughs> all of that origi originated with the slaves and on plantations, and it was all a means of um, their religion, their mysticism, things like that. So to pay respect to that and to, you know, give a nod to that and to educate you guys a little bit on my channel this month, I am going to be using this deck. I'm doing a little different read today. Um, this deck is separated into three separate groups right here. We have the elders. These are all your major arcana card. This is judgment right here. It's called them bones. Like there's different names for everything guys. And there's, um, it's just a beautiful deck and I can't wait to share it with you. Anyways, I'm gonna pull you some advice from the ancestors. This is like the highest wisdom that you're needing to pay attention to these major arcana. That's gonna be what's most important going on in your reading. The court cards in this deck, you know, the kings, the queens, the knights, the pages, that's called the family in this deck. So I'm going to pull from the family as well and see what kind of advice um, we can get from them. And then the rest of the cards, the minor arcana, excluding the court cards, are all um, considered the community. So basically, the hierarchy is you should care the most what the elders think, and then your family, and then what everyone else thinks. So they're all important messages. They're all things that need to be heard, but th there is a hierarchy to them. So I'm going to pull from all three sets of these cards, and I am going to give you the history behind everything, okay? So that is that. If you guys have any questions about any of this or would like to discuss this, I will throw up a post on my community page where we can discuss hoodoo and practices and things like that if you are into talking about stuff like that. Uh, if not, here comes your read for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you've not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. All right, Pisces, I'm going to go ahead and pull your cards for you guys. I'm going to start with your ancestor cards. These are the cards that are going to have the most meaning on the reading. They're the high spiritual advice that your ancestors are wanting you to pay attention to right now. I'm going to take three cards for this, and then I'm going to pull one for the center about how your ancestors are viewing you at this time. And then I'm going to do three uh, supporting cards from the community to get a, bit, a bigger picture, a broader picture of the situation. All right, what three cards can I get for my Pisces here? We have John Horse.
We have strength. And we have them bones. All right, we've got judgment, we've got strength. We've got the emperor, but the emperor or the magician? It's the emperor. All right, guys, let me pull your other cards to see what's going on right here. It's a heavy energy so far. How are Pisces ancestors viewing them at this time? How are Pisces ancestors viewing them at this time? Mother of Knives, Queen of Swords energy. Okay. It's not a terrible way to be viewed. <laughs> She's logical. She can be cold, she can be um, cutting, she can be calculated. They do see you standing in your power and your truth. That card falls right below strength, so I do feel like they're seeing you being strong about something. That um, You're going through something major here. Ace of, Co Ace of Coins energy. This is Ace of Pentacles energy. This is like a... Like having your cake and eating it too, looking at that. <laughs> looking at that picture, that's the energy I get. You got nine of baskets, which is nine of cups energy. And then one more. Five of knives. It's five of swords energy. All right, I am getting the feeling that something major just came to an end for you, Pisces, or um, it's either the very beginning of something or the very end of something. I can't decide yet, and I'm hating that I can't pull clarifiers, guys. I'm just, I'm just not doing clarifiers today. I'm just letting the ancestors speak and say what they need to say, you know, short and sweet for you guys. But the first card that you pull is the emperor, okay? Um, they have a Proverbs verse up here for the emperor in the, in the book. And guys, I never read out of the book. I'm not that reader, but I'm doing this for historical purposes. Um, here's the John Horse card right here. That you got the emperor. Where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. Um... It says, John Horse is seated calmly on his throne. He has a rifle strapped to him. He's clutching a knife in the other hand. And in the other hand, it's balled into a tight fist. He's ready for anything. However, John's most powerful weapon, arguably, is the prophet Abiyaka, who is busy summoning spirits to keep the community safe. Abiyaka's clan totem, the Black Panther, is poised for a vicious attack against anyone who dares to challenge them. John Horse was a real person. He was born in 1812. He lived to 1882. His, um, he's also known as Juan Caballo, or Caballo. He was born into slavery in Florida. Not much is known about his early life, but he became a leader of the Seminole Indians and participated in the Second Seminole War, which prior to the war in Vietnam was the United States Army's only non-victory. In addition, in 1849, John Horse led the largest escape of enslaved people to freedom in U.S. history. He also found free settlements for the runaways in Oklahoma and Mexico, by the time of his death, he had fought against the French, the Americans, and hostile Indians working in conjunction with the colonists. He avoided slave catchers, three wars, and several assassination attempts. Got this guy's like bulletproof. There are but a few of this warrior's outstanding accomplishments. He defended free black settlements on three frontiers and was said to love children, whiskey, and his notable horse, American. Um... It says when he appears in your reading, you're asked to be take charge of whatever's going on in your life. Uh, this is not the time for self-doubt or weakness of any kind. I mean, this guy was sh shot at, stabbed, chased, you know, all these things. This is not the time to be weak. This is time to get on your horse and like, you know, pony up, man up. That coupled with this strength card, you're facing a, a big judgment or a big decision. When I get judgment come in with all this energy here, 
And it's, uh, I don't think you know it's coming. I don't think you know this is coming. I think your ancestors are preparing you to see the truth of something. Um, I definitely get the message that they're trying to send you some, uh, a message that there's something you're about to find out that's going to, you know, rock you. <laughs> it's going to force you into this um, emperor strength mode to make this decision, this judgment. It's going to be a shock is what I'm getting. Um, with this mother of knives in the middle of everything, I, I, I read art, guys. You know, this is going to cut like a knife when art, whatever this is comes out. Whenever this message comes out, it's going to, it's going to cut to the core of things, but I, uh, she's right in the middle of this book. I want to read what it says about that. I want to see what it says about that. And this, um, them bones card, you guys, this judgment card, this is a form of, um, hoodoo right here. It's casting, casting objects, usually bones, things like that. Um, root workers would use things like this, bones, small objects, trinkets, things like that. They would assign a specific meaning to the things. And each reader was different in the way they threw their items and the way they read their items. If one was touching another, what it would mean. It was such an intricate system that was, you know, just intuitive to the person who did it. All right. So this lady's over here, you know, having her bones read and she's finding out some really shocking news. All right. And this is like, a, it's a major, major drop in a bomb right here is what I'm getting. It's like the truth is coming out. And my ear just started ringing when I said that. So I feel like that is a sign. All right, you got Mother of Knives here. She just looks like she's, um, she's a, depicted as a member of two prestigious secret societies, the Grand Order of Odd Fellows and the Order of the Eastern Star. In addition to the church, mutual aid, secret societies, and fraternal and sororal organizations were the backbone of Black American communities between the 18th and 20th centuries. Unlike women of other races, Black women were welcome to participate and were respected as powerful leaders and influencers of many of these organizations. Here, the Mother of Nyes is a powerful bibliomancer who uses the Bible as a guide. So um, her truth is coming straight from source, straight from spirit. I got a feeling um, you're going to get this message out of the blue from your guides somehow. There's going to be a weird way that you find out about all this information. It's going to feel like it just fell into your lap. That's what I'm getting. Um, she's the archetype of a warrior queen. She's on the positive side. She's percept perceptive, analytical, forthright, witty, independent. On the negative side, she can be a, perfect, a perfectionist, cold-hearted, aggressive, bitchy. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna have to think about this logically when it comes your way. Okay, it is gonna be a shock. This five of knives right here is just telling you to watch your mouth. It's telling you to what? Watch what you say when this um whatever this truth bomb is that's coming out. You're being advised big time to um, not react instinctually, I feel like, which would be to rip this person's head off. <coughs> um, she's got, if you, you can't really see it, um, there's a silver coin hidden in her mouth right there. It's hidden beneath her tongue. It's called putting a bit in your mouth. It was believed by some root workers that if you had no choice but to lie in court, you would be freed of responsibility for lying after swearing on the Bible. So this is someone who knows dang well they're going to come in and start, you know, uh, lying about something. Someone's been lying on purpose and thinking they can get away with it. And it's about to get found out. It's about to get found out big time. And I feel like you're going to be telling this person that they cannot have their cake and eat it too. Because it looks like that plate's already been used to me. It's already eaten the cake. And then he wants more cake or pie. <laughs>
Let me read about that one for you guys, that Ace of Coins and the Nine of Baskets. You guys, the the cards, these cards and the art on these are just worth the, you know, it's like 18 bucks on Amazon to buy this deck. I would highly recommend it if you're a tarot collector. So yeah, this is, you know, holding up a slice of sweet potato pie here on a serving knife to offer her guests. The pie was baked with a lucky Indian head penny, a tiny piece of a ragged cloth, a matchstick, a pea, and a ring inside, inspired by the traditional Irish bambrock bread. The coin symbolizes wealth. The cloth symbolizes poverty. The pea symbolizes not getting married. The matchstick symbolizes domestic discord, and the ring symbolizes getting married. The guest shown here is not only receiving the slice with the lucky penny, but she's also received a message in the tea leaves for telling good fortune ahead. Oh, that's her teacup she's holding there. So she's got double good luck coming with Ace of Coins. This is going to be a blessing in disguise when you find this out, is what I'm saying. I do see the air um, of somebody being single. I'm just getting you dodged a bullet with this one. Um, I, I see you being spiritually guided out of a bad decision. I see at the heart of the matter you being truthful with yourself about this, um, whatever the situation is. And doing things the right way. She's a bibliomancer. She relied on the Bible for all of her power. Which shows me doing something in a traditional way. Whatever this is, you're going to want to do it in a traditional way. Because I feel like someone's being untraditional or has not been traditional in the past. And someone's been intentionally hiding something, thinking they're not going to get caught. It's like saying a promise and crossing your fingers behind your back. I've a y'all. I'm a lawyer in real life. Like I have a law degree. And by the way, nothing on my channel is to be taken as legal advice. P.S. Unless you sign a client with agreement with me, you are not my client. I am not giving you legal advice. I just say that because uh, one of my, you know, friends' mothers, who was basically like a root worker, she's the one who had me starting putting pennies in my shoes when I went to court. I guess if you put a penny under your tongue when you go lion court, you can also chew the root. Um, I think it's galangal root. If you chew the root while you're in court, you can lie when you're in court. But only if it's for a good purpose, they say. That's why I like hoodoo. It, it you know, goes back and forth between you know, things that might be considered taboo, but it's only you know, going after people who actually deserve it, not, not going after people for spite or whatever. It's someone who's harmed your family in some way. And you can go put the hex on them. A lot of modern witches and stuff, they believe only in putting out good because that's what you amplify back. But like, there is a necessity to stop evil sometimes if you have, you know, the kind of energy and stuff that can be worked in a way to do that. And I feel like I see that here. I feel like you are having a big time warning moment right here from your guides. That there is about to be something come to light that is going to, you know, cut to the core of whatever this relationship, this matter is. And again, these are general readings, you guys. So this could have to do with your job, your family, your love life, anything. You apply it to how it resonates. I'm seeing a big unveiling of a crazy truth, though. That's actually going to turn out in your benefit. It's double lucky. And it's going to leave you in a, you know, nine of, nine of cups energy, which is... Uh, it's having all your stuff to yourself. Like all these baskets are filled with money and bread and cheese and like all kinds of good stuff to eat. It's like not having to worry about sharing your stuff with somebody else. I feel like you're about to, someone was like about to get you for your bag or your coin or something and something's gonna come out how they were shady. I'm just getting this situation where there's um, information you're gonna be finding out about a person or a situation that you are involved in right now. I do feel like it has to do somewhat with financial. Cause I'm seeing it coming up as a double ace of coins moment for you, like a double lucky, fortunate, solid beginning in something. But there is a need for you to um, 
with the Emperor energy and the Queen of Swords here, there is a need for you to be in strength. You need to lay all emotion aside is what I'm getting when this when this is dropped onto your lap and you find out whatever this is you're finding out, you need to leave emotion out of it completely and make decisions based strictly on your stability and what will make you more stable in that situation. Even if it is being single and pulling back your resources from this person. All right, that's what I got for you guys, Pisces. I hope you enjoy. Love you guys.